Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of the Lockdown Learning Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Gallivan, the father of an energetic five-year-old and a staff member at Alpine Valley School in Colorado, USA, which specializes in self-directed education. And I'm your other host, Kate Coleman. Uh, I'm a mother of three boys, and I co-founded the first Sudbury Model School in the UK, East Kent Sudbury School. I'm really excited to be able to be a part of putting this together with Mark, despite the physical distance between us. Due to the global COVID-19 lockdown, many parents suddenly find themselves in the unfamiliar role of home educators. And maybe it's just me, but I don't think it is. Um, but I find it completely overwhelming. Kate, do you feel that too? Absolutely. I've previously home educated for a, a number of years, um, but this is not the same. It's an unprecedented situation. We're all facing the same issues right now. And I think you're right. It is absolutely overwhelming. I think it's especially hard for those who haven't home educated before, but also for those who are somehow trying to work from home at the same time. It can feel impossible. Something has to give. So because we're both involved in education, Kate and I reached out to our networks and put together this podcast with a whole host of resources for parents just like you. From basic questions like, how do I homeschool anyway, to subjects with more nuanced answers like, how do I support my child's mental health and look after my own? We've covered all the bases, and we're here to help make homeschooling work for your family. We hope that you can come away from every episode of the podcast feeling educated, empowered, and a bit more relaxed. We hope that you can start to recognize the learning that's taking place, even when you're not sure that the activity is educational, and that you feel less pressure to try and make a very unordinary situation feel normal. You already know everything you need to know about being a great parent to your child, and I think that's what really matters. In today's episode, we're focusing on the very basics of homeschooling 101. For all of us who are way out of our depth here, we sat down with two veteran homeschoolers to get their take. From the USA, we interviewed Laura Burgess, the parent of three former Alpine Valley School students who homeschooled her kids for many years before coming to our school. And also Rachel Jones from here in the UK. Rachel is a part-time staff member at East Kent Sudbury School. And she's also a home educator of 10 years to her four boys. We're hoping that the combination of their wisdom will be enough to help the rest of us breathe easily as we try to keep ourselves and our children sane while schooling at home. Here are Laura and Rachel. I'm Laura Burgess. I'm the mother of three children who started out homeschooling, and then uh, they, we did that for 13 years. My name's Rachel. So uh, I have four boys aged, uh, let me think about this, <laughs> four, eight, 10, and 12. And uh, I'm a part-time staff member at East Kent Sudbury School. Um, our facility at the moment is only open three days a week, so I guess I'm still a home educator. Uh, for the two days that we're closed. But previous to EKSS opening, I home educated for about 10 years. So many people home educating for the first time. Many are asking, does school at home really need to look like school at school? It's so different in so many ways. You can't expect to replicate school at home. I think it can't look like school because it's a very different dynamic. Um, it's a different environment psychologically. Um, it feels very differently to the child. You don't have the group dynamic. You don't have the kind of group discipline, the, what do they call it? Positive peer pressure of all the other children um, in the class behaving in a certain way and expecting your, your kid to kind of uh, conform to that. And Generally speaking, children feel a lot happier and more relaxed at home, which is a good thing. But of course, what that means is that you're not going to get the same kind of behavior out of them at home that you would do at school. And it would be unrealistic to expect that. Um, at the same time, 
you're not necessarily a trained teacher you can't do all the same things that a teacher would do in a class perhaps you've got kids different ages um so not only does it not have to look like it but it it physically can't i would never expect the homeschooling uh to look anything like a a classroom because it was so diverse and so rich and so immediate um, and responsive to what the children wanted to learn. Um, we unschooled, and that took us on tangents that we followed until they were done. The, uh, you know, one day we'd, we would be s- sniffing ponderosa trees. Other days we would be headed to the symphony. The, the life that we led was the learning and was the classroom. Under normal circumstances, I would say, no, you, you don't need a timetable. Let your children have some time to uh, de-school and, and see where their interests take them. Um, obviously, the situation we're in at the moment is temporary. So if you have children currently out of school, but they're going to go be going back into school after this is all over, they might appreciate having that kind of continuity, particularly if you have kids that are quite anxious and, and want that sense of normality. Or if you have children with special needs that really do depend on having a a schedule or a routine. But I would say don't do it for the sake of having a timetable or trying to make it like school. It should be about what's what's best for your children, what makes them feel most happy, most um, comfortable with the situation that we're in. Obviously, nothing's ideal at the moment. Are they happy? Are they stressed? Are they finding this the schoolwork too much? Um, I think focus on their mental health first. If if they want to have a timetable, that's fine. If they would rather just play, that's absolutely fine as well. Let them have the autonomy they want. Focus on your relationship and focus on their mental health. There's a, as many ways as home educating as there are home educating families. So. I have had contact with quite a few parents during this time, and I encourage them to have faith in the intelligence of their children and to have faith in themselves when something felt too regimented, felt too rigid, to to trust themselves and allow for the the children to to lead the situations um having faith in themselves that they can th- they can identify what their children need and also have faith that the children can absolutely be heard and those needs are valid those what the children need are exactly what should be attended to at that time so it's been so interesting to talk with clients that are very, very, very nervous, and we have to get this done, and the stress and the anxiety was huge. And then when I told them about my three children and how well they managed with the basics of the freedom that they had through the homeschooling, unschooling, I felt like I gave them support for what they were doing and and hope for it wasn't as impossible as they thought. Interestingly enough, I do have a a friend who is a fellow home educator. And before she home educated her own children, she trained as a teacher. And she said that in some ways, she feels kind of glad that she did that. She feels maybe she's a little bit more confident in the kind of academic subjects and that kind of thing. But on the other hand, she feels like she's at a disadvantage because she's been trained to relate to children and to teach children in a certain way. And it just doesn't work like that at home. And she's had to kind of unlearn a lot of that in order to become an effective home educator. And I think that's quite interesting because being a teacher doesn't necessarily prepare you well for home educating your children because, as we said, it's a completely different dynamic. Start off by just concentrating on being their parent. Uh, Be present. Pay attention to what they're interested in. What do they want to do when you give them the freedom to to follow their own interests and follow along in their interests with them. Uh, Don't 
try and take over and and kind of guide those interests necessarily, but be a happier resource. Um, and as Laura said, kind of trust their instincts, trust that they know what they want to do and, and be there to be at hand and to help them. Um, and also there's a, in, in our day and age, the information age, there's a heck of a lot of information available online. There's some amazing resources. So my youngest child is a distance teacher. She's student teaching. She's doing this. And I see the, I see how the lessons that she's putting forth, I'm observing how a teacher operates. But what I really like is her interfacing with the parents as the parents say, well, it just didn't go anywhere today. And it's interesting to hear a teacher encourage the parent. So I'm super happy to see that and hear that. I understand that to continue on within the schooling system, that they will need to meet these uh, requirements. And everything, you know, one thing builds upon the other, supporting the student, taking a break, um, and not being confrontational. I, I think it's, it's key to just understand when your student has had, when, you're, when your child has had enough. I do really feel for parents and for kids that are in this situation because on the one hand I want to say don't if they really don't want to do the work don't make them um, but on the other hand if you're planning on sending your children back to that school you want to maintain good relationships obviously with the school um, and I think again it's about knowing your children taking it on a case by case uh, sorry taking it case by case I think you need to be your, your child's advocate at this time if they're stressed, if they're unhappy, if they're really struggling with the schoolwork. Perhaps try and have conversations with the school and, and try and talk about this if you can. Ideally, you don't want to be making your kids do anything at this time that they don't want to do. But I do understand that that's quite a tricky situation and you've probably got to be quite political about it with some, some schools. I think some are, are setting kids quite a lot of work and are, are tracking what they're doing and are, um, logging whether or not they're attending online and, and things like that. And others are maybe sending a couple of worksheets home and won't notice whether or not they do them. I think the biggest piece of advice is don't beat yourself up about it and don't worry. Um, they are going to be okay. I think the main thing to focus on is just their mental health because this is a very difficult time to be living in um are they getting stressed are they worried about what they're seeing in the news that kind of thing i think just being there for them being able to have those kind of conversations and, and having them know that you're there for them are, are much much more important than focusing on you know have they done an hour of maths this week or, or whatever it might be just you know be there for them be their parent that is the, the biggest thing you can do right now Um, along with what Rachel just said, is providing a peaceful, safe environment. Uh, I, I think it's the most valuable thing that one can do for their children at this time. So within the structure of homeschooling, it, it doesn't have to be confrontational. A big thank you to Laura and Rachel for being on the show today. I really appreciated how calm and insightful they both were. Yeah, the message to trust your children and just kind of step away from all the madness really resonated with me. I think we parents can put all of this tremendous pressure on ourselves, and it's so nice to hear that it's okay to just be with our children and that that's enough. That does it for the first episode of the Lockdown Learning Podcast. We'd love to hear your feedback as well as any other suggestions you have for future episodes. You can contact the show via email at lockdownlearningpodcast at gmail.com. You can also find out more about East Kent Sudbury School by visiting their website, ekss.org.uk, and you can find Alpine Valley School at alpinevalleyschool.com. In the next episode, we'll be focusing on maintaining mental health and well-being during the lockdown. Keep an eye out for that one coming soon. I'm Kate. And I'm Mark. You've been listening to the Lockdown Learning Podcast. 
Until next time, remember to take a deep breath, hug your kids, and pat yourself on the back because we know you absolutely deserve it. Be well. Thank you.